Welcome back to The Rundown. Let's turn now to the United States, where not only is a new president coming into office, but a new Congress as well. Now, one of the uh, more intriguing freshman lawmakers entering the House of Representatives is Richie Torres, a Democrat from New York's 15th Congressional District. He's an openly gay Afro-Latino who grew up in public housing, ran an underdog grassroots campaign with no establishment support in a crowded field, and won. He considers himself a progressive, but unlike some of his colleagues in that wing of the Democratic Party, is strongly pro-Israel as well. And he spoke with our senior U.S. correspondent, Mike Wagenheim. Happy to be joined today by Congressman-elect Richie Torres from New York's 15th Congressional District. Welcome, uh, Congressman-elect. You're in D.C. right now going through what seems like an interminable orientation. What has this journey been like from a uh, you know, long shot, to say the least, to Congressman-elect and heading to the halls of Congress in January? It has been surreal. You know, I never thought in my wildest dreams as a poor kid from the Bronx uh, that I would become a United States congressman. You know, I spent most of my life in poverty. I was raised by a single mother who had to raise three children on minimum wage, which in the 1990s was $4.25 an hour in New York City. And I grew up in the slum conditions of public housing, right? mold and mildew, leaks and lead, without reliable heat and hot water in the winter. And so I never thought I would embark on a journey that would take me from public housing in the Bronx to the People's House in Washington, D.C. I'm enormously gratified and grateful. And nobody really gave you much of a chance. The uh, Democratic yeah. Congressional Committee didn't uh, really pay much attention, didn't get much help uh, from the local uh, Democratic Party, no real big-time endorsements, an 11-candidate field. You overcome the odds. The, the difference now, I guess, in some sense, is that you are a free man heading to Congress. Yeah. You owe nothing to anybody, and you can kind of do as you please as long as you're representing your constituents back home. That has to be uh, somewhat liberating. There's nothing more liberating than independence. You know, as you pointed out, nearly everyone was against me, right? Some of the most powerful labor unions were against me. Bernie Sanders was against me. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez was against me. The Working Families Party, the Democratic Socialists of America were against me. Um, the local Democratic Party and National Democratic Party thought I had no chance of winning. Uh, but I had support where it mattered the most, and that was the support of the people in the South Bronx. Uh, because the residents of the South Bronx saw their own story and their own struggles in, in my lived experiences. You know, I've been a, a housing organizer in the Bronx, you know, and I spoke to the bread and butter concerns of health and housing, schools and jobs. And I was able to win a fiercely contested primary that no one thought I could win on the strength of grassroots campaigning. You know, the Democratic caucus is going to elect the House Foreign Affairs Committee chairman on uh, Thursday. Yeah. It would certainly appear that Gregory Meeks out of New York mm -hmm. is the front runner and will likely win. Uh, folks in Israel are watching this. Elliot Engel was a, a friend of Israel for a number of years as the helm of that particular committee. What do you know about Congressman Meeks and his approach to Israel? And have you had a chance as a fellow New Yorker yeah. to engage with him yet on something that you feel is an important issue in Israel? I'm a strong supporter of Gregory Meeks. I have the highest respect for him, and I can assure you that he is going to be deeply committed to sustaining and strengthening the American-Israeli relationship. He believes, as I do, that Israel has a right to exist, it has a right to defend itself, and that the American-Israeli relationship is one of the most important bilateral relationships in the world. And we have to preserve it for the next generation of Israelis and Americans. He's, he's flip-flopped just a bit, to be fair, saying at uh, one point in recent months uh, that it would condition American aid uh, based on some uh, decisions that the Israeli government made in terms of uh, a settlement annexation, applying uh, sovereignty in Judea and, the, and Samaria, the West Bank. He has since changed his tone. What, what, where is Gregory Meeks on, on the issue of, uh, of aid to Israel, defense aid, because uh, this is something that the House Foreign Affairs Committee is deeply involved in. Of course, the House controls the purse strings. What, what, what do you know about the issue? I'm, I'm confident that he believes, as I do, that the relationship between Israel and the United States is not simply a transactional alliance. It's a friendship rooted in common history and common values. And friendships, by definition, are unconditional. Like, you know, you and I, if we're allies, we can have passionate debates behind the scenes, right? 
But in the end, our friendship should be unconditional. You should not play hardball uh, with one of our greatest friends in the world. And there's no doubt in my mind that that future chairman Gregory Meek shares that view. As a as a pro-Israel progressive, it almost seems like a, a paradox to many now uh, that watch uh, the workings of the party with the definite anti-Israel tilt. Uh, uh, where where do you think you're going to fall in line um, in terms of relationships with your fellow Congress people on the left? And and has there been any dialogue so far uh, with those to your your left on the issue of Israel? So. I hope to be a bridge between progressives and moderates within the Democratic Party, and I hope to be a model of pro-Israel progressivism. You know, I'm living proof of the notion that, you know, you cannot be both progressive or pro-Israel. That's a living lie. That's a vicious lie. Um, you know, I'm pro-Israel not despite my progressivism, but because of my progressivism. And, you know, the argument I would make is, look, criticism of any country whether it's the United States or Israel's fair game. Uh, what is beyond the pale is BDS, is the attempt to delegitimize Israel, is to single out Israel for delegitimation, right? That's not criticism, that's extremism, that's hate. And we as a Democratic Party should be against hatred and extremism. Wish you nothing but the best of luck. We'll be uh, keeping tabs on you, certainly. Israel will be keeping tabs on you as well. Be safe, be healthy, and congratulations to Congressman-elect Richie Torres. Thanks so much for taking the time out of your day to join us. It was a pleasure. Thank you.